Most of my interests as a historian have been in American history, and particularly in the history of the American West. Uh, so I've run into uh, many opportunities to think about how disease uh, affected uh, the Native Americans, uh, how within a couple of generations of the landing of Columbus in the Bahamas in 1492, diseases like smallpox, measles, uh, had spread out across the continent, just wreaked havoc on Native populations. Perhaps as many as 95% of Native peoples uh, dead within a few decades. And when you think about that percentage, it becomes a little numbing if you translate into numbers. Historians have begun to try to estimate, with the help of uh, anthropologists, uh, scientists, uh, how many Native people there were in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the numbers run uh, from the highest estimates of around a fifth of the world's population, maybe 150 million people, uh, down to many uh, fewer than that. But nevertheless, millions of people being killed by uh, old world diseases. Smallpox and measles usually uh, get most of the blame. But other uh, problems, uh, influenza, when it comes to the Americas, uh, devastating. Uh, problem. Uh, and of course, uh, the native people's not the only ones to suffer with the outbreak of diseases that have not been present in our population before. As Craig uh, is telling us uh, in this course, uh, that's one of the problems that uh, folks encounter diseases that they haven't seen before, their bodies uh, fresh meat for the ravages of these illnesses. Uh, one, one of the diseases that's kind of interesting when you think about native people is typhus. Uh, Scholars uh, debate back and forth uh, the origins of these diseases and where they start and where they go and try to trace the pattern of their transit. Uh, typhus, most scholars now think, came to America with the Vikings who didn't bring smallpox and measles with them because they didn't seem to have those diseases when they came about 1000 AD. But it seems pretty likely that typhus uh, came to America in the hair and clothes of the Vikings and their lice that uh, then brought uh, typhus to the uh, Western Hemisphere. It was already here when the Europeans came uh, uh, in, not in large numbers some 500 years later. So as a, uh, as a factor of depopulation, this is a, a, a story no one doubts and no one denies because the evidence is just overwhelming. Sometimes we hear white people purposefully afflicted the native peoples with smallpox, uh, other diseases. There is some evidence of this. For example, during the French and Indian War, an English general undoubtedly sent blankets from infected smallpox victims to some native people who were fighting on the other side, hoping that this would uh, uh, infect them with smallpox. So uh, perhaps there was some early biological warfare uh, when it came to the Americas. It's kind of a final footnote to this part of our story. Uh, I also teach African history, and occasionally a student will ask, why were the Africans able to maintain a, a massive population so that white people in Africa were always in a minority, whereas in the case of the Americas, the native peoples became instantly, almost, a minority? Well, disease is the answer. Uh, the Africans, having been in contact with the Europeans for many hundreds of years, uh, prior to the, the uh, colonization of Africa by the European nations, largely in the 19th century, uh, really weren't going to be affected by these European diseases the way the Native Americans were. And so disease tells the story of a difference between the, uh, the way Native peoples in the West or in Hemisphere uh, dealt with white invaders as opposed to the way those in the Eastern Hemisphere dealt with white invaders. We can make a similar case with regard to China and Japan, where smallpox and other old world diseases had already uh, had their ravages. So it's a very interesting story in a very interesting new sort of way if you haven't thought about these issues before to kind of understand uh, what went on in uh, various places as the world turned in those days of colonialism and conquest and uh, and depopulation and uh, population movements.